First Lady and I come to this hallowed ground deeply aware that we cannot fill the void in your heart or erase the terrible sorrow of this day. While we cannot erase your pain, we can help to shoulder your burden. We promise that unwavering love that you so want and need, support, devotion, and the very special devotion of all Americans. America will always rise up, stand tall, and fight back. Now, anyone who thinks President Trump is incapable of unifying the country didn't pay attention to his speech today commemorating the valiant heroes of 9-11. It's hard to believe it was 19 years ago after these tragic events, and we still hold dear our promise to never forget. But that's exactly what some on the left seem to want. So how do we make sure that never happens? My next guest was the commissioner of the NYPD on that tragic day, and Bernie Carrick joins me now. Bernie, um, I know it's, it's impossible for any of us to believe that it was 19 years ago, um, but with this new attitude that we need to somehow tear down our history to cleanse ourselves and, and replace our old heroes with new radical ones, how does that honor uh, the memory of those who lost their lives on 9-11? It doesn't. It doesn't. But I, I got to be honest, Laura. I, I think that's about, uh, you know, maybe 10 to 15 percent of the American public. That's these left-wing, radical, Marxist uh, you know, lunatics that are out there trying to, uh, you know, diminish the police, uh, victimize the thugs, villainize the police. The bottom line is, I think, 80 to 85 percent of America, maybe 90, I think they know and understand what the police did. And on that day in 2001, the men and women of the NYPD, the Port Authority Police, the Fire Department, they basically affected the greatest rescue mission in the history of this country by taking 20 to 25,000 people out of those buildings and the surrounding buildings and evacuating, evacuating more than a million people out of Southern Manhattan into the four boroughs, which has never been done in the history of this country. And it was effortlessly that it was done. And Bernie, I was in Washington, uh, and I remember uh, riding my bike over to the Pentagon because after it said I, all the roads were closed, I wanted to see it. And I remember standing there on this intersection with maybe two or three other people who walked from, I guess they were at the White House, and they walked across. We were just, we couldn't even speak. We couldn't even, we <laughs> couldn't even speak that our nation was under attack, yet all these years later, we seem to be attacking each other, not uh, attacking basic institutions that are, essential to our well-being and essential in case, heaven forbid, we have another tragedy like this. You know what, uh, Laura, you need the right people in command. You need the right leaders. And, and I'm going to I'm going to get political for a second. You know, there was one person that was a ground zero that walked through ground zero, motivated the troops, uh, incentivized the troops, brought hundreds of his own civilian workers down there. And that was Donald Trump. He wasn't running for president at the time. He had no idea he was ever going to run for president. He was down there for days. I saw him regularly down there. And for anybody to talk about him today and, and make any kind of negative comment about the president and his leadership ability, he was leading then. But you know who I didn't see at ground zero? I didn't see Joe Biden. Joe Biden was like the, the kitty parade that came in for, for, you know, show and tell, took a look around and then skated back to Delaware. That's where Joe Biden was. Donald Trump was down there inspiring the troops, getting people motivated and, and doing anything he could for the mayor and I to make our job easier. Personally, I only have a few um, moments left, but personally, um, just take us back to that day, Bernie, in the last uh, few seconds we have. When the first plane hit the tower, I was in my office. When the second plane hit Tower 2, I was standing in front of it. And uh, and about 30 minutes later, the mayor and I were inside 75 Barclay when Tower 2 imploded on top of us and around us, trapping us in that building. By the Bernie. end of the day, I lost 23 people. Port Authority cops lost 37. Bernie, the fire department um, lost 343. Story. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we so appreciate it on this special day.